to another tutorial on web development with Flask. My name is Ronak Vyas and this video is a collaboration with Programming Knowledge. In this video, we'll talk about how we can set up our database in Flask and how we can connect our web application, which we have written in Flask, to the database. For the database selection, we are going to be using SQL Lite 3. Uh, the links are in the description uh, for the source code of this video and the previous videos and also uh, for how to learn or way to learn about SQL Lite 3 more. Uh, I'm really sorry about the audio quality of the videos. Uh, I'm in the process of getting a new mic and the audio will be much more clearer uh, from the next video. Until then, I'll try to be as slow as possible and also as articulate as possible. So let's get started. So let's see where we had stopped in the previous video. So let's run our web application. And let's see how it looks like. So we had developed the front page. We have a nav bar ready. We had developed the sign up page and how we can uh, send a post request or how we can send user data to the server and sign up and login. Now we're going to sign up a user uh, or just enter his uh, details into the database and we'll see how that works. So this is how our init uh, page looks like. So let's add our uh, code to actually initialize our database. So first you need SQL Alchemy in your uh, program so install that. Uh, I'll send I'll uh, have the link in the description how to install SQL Alchemy in your uh, project. Then let's import that. So from Flask SQL Alchemy, we import SQL Alchemy. Let's initialize our database. So db equal to SQL Alchemy. We have our instance of SQL Alchemy ready here. Now we need to add some configurations into our app. So First, we need a secret key. So, usually we have a secret key in a different uh, configuration file, but since it's just a, a hobby project, we can have a secret key here, uh, which is exposed uh, in the code. And we have another config, which is for the URL of our database. So, we will be generating our database. So we need to let Flask know where our database URL is. So it's called as URI. Uh, it starts like this. So it is an SQLite database. So SQLite colon three slashes. And it is going to be inside the same uh, structure. So it's going to be inside PL video file for my project. So, and the name will be db.sqlite. So this is where our uh, SQL database will be formed and we'll see how we will be seeing that in a minute and let's uh, initialize our app in the database so this is some configuration code which we need when we write our uh, set up our database and once this is done next is to create our table so we'll have a user table for our user to sign up into the website and store his credentials and all the tables uh, which are created using Flask go inside a file called as models.py. Models.py. I am sorry about the click noise because that is my uh, new keyboard. I like a mechanical keyboard, so uh, the clicks uh, sound is really irritating for some people. So I'm really sorry about that. Now let's see how how we are going to write our models.py. So first, let's import our DB. So so we had initialized a database here, uh, the DB instance here. So now we can use it uh, everywhere inside our applications with this. So then let's set up a class. Uh, we want a user which is going to inherit it, inherit from db.model. Now this user will have an email ID, a password, and a name. And uh, since each user is going to be unique, we're going to give it an ID as well, which is going to be our primary key. So let's start with the ID. So id is db column and the id is going to be an integer and the primary key parameter is going to be true. Next we need an email. So let's copy this so that we don't have to worry about the rest. 
the email is going to be a string and usually emails are around 100 to 200 characters long so let's give it 100 so that we know that it's not a really big email id and it has to be unique so make sure that it is unique it needs a password so we'll not be storing the raw password inside our database we'll see how we're going to hash our password and store the hash only and in the next video we'll actually see how we can uh, rehash or uh, get the hash password from the database or uh, check it with the user entered password in the login section and how we can log in a user so everything about flask login system will be in the next video in this video we'll talk about how a user can actually connect the web application with the database so again a password will be a maximum of 100 characters it can be same for different people so we are going to put a unique parameter there and the next is name so we can just copy this actually we don't need to write it again the name is going to be a string so this is our user model for our database and this is ready once we have this ready all we need to do is initialize or create the database so now we create the database on the command line so let's see how that works go to your command line uh, close the server for now and here open python and from your uh, project so from for me it's pl video file import the db instance and create app so we have our create app here and the db here from nn.py so let's import that awesome and now let's create all the tables which we have inside our models so app equal to create app that looks about good so now what we're doing here is that we are uh, manually creating all the tables and we'll have a db.sql file here once we create this and once that is done we can start querying or inserting data into our tables and as you can see uh, ignore the warnings and we have a db.sqlite table ready close this and now we can go ahead and add our users inside our database so now go to our authentication file this is where we handle everything regarding the sign up and login pages and sign up post as we discussed is what happens when a user sends a post request so we handle everything here and let's see how we can input this into our database so first we need some things we need uh, to generate a password hash so let's import those functions for now so we have this we need the user table because you are going to uh, add our user data into, into the user table so from models we import the user and as usual we need our database we have our db ready so now we have all the required libraries and let's set up our sign up page for now so let's comment this out and now first once the user has put his email id name and password we need to check whether the user is actually already signed up or not so for that let's extract the user from the database uh, using the email we have user dot query we use the filter by function so filter by the table uh, with the email the email is the email here which we have at the top and get the first result now here what we're doing is we're querying the database or querying the user table to get the uh, row which has the email and we get the first row not multiple rows just to be made, just to be sure that we get the first one and once this is done if the user exists then we just print that the user is ready exists so that people know that they cannot access it and once we complete this page in the next 
uh, video, we're going to redirect the user back to the sign up page. So let me finish this. I think there's some error here. Let's see what the error is. The indentation doesn't match. That's fine. Uh, it doesn't match here as well. Okay. Good to go. So now if user exists, we print and user or ready exists. Now if the user does not exist, we create a new user, so new user, and we add this, we generate an instance of the user table. So the email is equal to email. The name is equal to name and now the password is going to be a hashed password we're going to use a generate hash function and let's see what we have the parameters here so first we need the password to be hashed and the method we're going to use is the SHA256 method so SHA256 I'll also link a uh, uh, down in the description about what is SHA256, you can read more about it. So now we have our new user ready, and this new user is an instance or an object of the user table. And all we need to do is add the new user to the database. So we have the db.session and we add a new user. And once we add it, we need to commit and make sure that the user has been added. So yeah, let's check or let's see what we have done here. So in the sign up post, once the user signs up, we extract the email name password in the previous video as we saw. We check if the user already exists or not. If it does, we print that it exists. And in the next video, we're going to redirect the user back to the sign up page because they can sign up again. If the user is not uh, signed up or the user does not exist, we create a new user object, we add the object to the database and we commit and make sure that the user is there. So let's just check all our files and let's run it and see what we get. So last run. So SQL Alchemy has no attribute model. Let's see where we have missed it. Was the error? The error was in UV. Oh, sorry, it has to be tapped again. My bad. Now let's go and we're good to go. Let's refresh our page and go to sign up. So we can add my name again, so Ranak. Uh, the email ID is Ranak. It's not the true and ready and we are not one, two, three. We sign up. And let's see what the error is. Okay, so this is where we had an error. So since this threw an error here, uh, the tables inside this were not created properly. So not a problem. We can we just have to do this again. So go to Python and delete our database again to move the bin and now from PL video file we import db and create app and db dot create all in the app is So now the database is created, everything else is done. Now hopefully our should not throw any other errors. Let's see if this, that is the case. We go to our home, go to sign up, enter the name again, Ranak, Ranak, Gmail, 
Chrome and sign up. And yes, we have been signed up and we have been redirected back to the login page. Now, to actually see whether we have signed up or not, I'll be using something called as a DB browser. So I'll link down, I'll link down a link for this as well. So DB browser lets you see your tables, uh, visualize it properly and see whether uh, all your data is inside your database or not. So we are going to open our database. So let's see, we go to projects. We have our video flogger, video five, and we have a DB here. So now let's browse data. And as you can see, we have our name, we have our email ID, and we have the SHA256 hash password and not the real password. So this is how we can uh, connect our database to our Flask per application. So just to reiterate or go back to the process, we configure and initialize a DB inside the init.py. We make a models.py file with a user inheriting from the main DB model. We have all our columns, the ID being the primary key, email, password, and name. Once we make this, we go back to our terminal. We create the app. So here we have done that. And once we create the app, we can go to auth and check whether the user is already there or not. If it's there, the user is already existing. If it's not, we create a new user, add the user to the database and comment. So this is how we can connect our database to our Flask application. In the next video, we'll talk about user authentication and how to log in a user, how to handle login sessions using the Flask login framework and see how that works. So thank you.